How long does it really take for any character to touch grass in each and every Star Wars movie? Today, I'm going to find the answer to that question. And out of the 12 Star Wars movies, yes, you heard me right, for this video and this video only, I will be including the Clone Wars movie. As I was saying, the movie that any character touches grass the quickest in is the one and only Rogue One. As you might remember, Rogue One kicks off on that weird planet where Jin's family is trying to hide from the Empire. It took a mere 2 minutes and 43 seconds for Lashif over here to walk on some grass. I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of hard to tell exactly when he touched it because he took like 4 steps that seemed like they were in dirt, but might have been grass. However, in the end, I think that this step right here is when he clearly stepped on it. So that settles it. You might be wondering why exactly I started off this video with Rogue One, which is a good question. The answer is that I'm going to rank these movies from fastest to slowest in terms of time it takes to touch grass. Man, try saying that 10 times fast. In terms of time it takes to touch grass. Ugh, never want to do that again. Anyway, Rogue One is the fastest of all the Star Wars movies, so it starts off this video. Next up, with the second fastest, is actually, surprisingly enough, The Rise of Skywalker. It takes 10 10 minutes and 49 seconds for Rey here to run through a patch of shrubs, right as she's getting started on her Jedi training course. Oh, and by the way, throughout this entire video, I will be very loose with what I define as grass, seeing as this is Star Wars and they have a ton of plants that are very similar. So basically, if it's green and it grows on the ground, then I decided to count it, cause why not? Sorry, got off track there for a second, but there are two times in The Rise of Skywalker where it's possible that grass was in fact touched earlier. The first is when BB-8 is watching Rey sit in the air like Doctor Frickin' Strange and he might be nudging the shrubs just a little. The second is when Rey comes down from her elevated position and finally hits the ground. We don't get a clear view of where she landed, but there's a good chance that she came down on some grass. However, neither of these cases can be proven, nor is there any real evidence to indicate that either of them are exceptionally likely. So I'm gonna have to go with 10 minutes and 49 seconds, because we can clearly see Rey running right through those ferns. But strangely enough, only two seconds behind the rise of Skywalker, we have the Phantom Menace, with Qui-Gon Jinn touching grass at 10 minutes and 51 seconds. Honestly, for a movie based mostly on a very green, vibrant planet, it's kind of surprising to me that it took this long to touch grass. But then I thought about it and realized that the first 10 minutes of the movie were spent in a CGI concrete jungle with not a green thing in sight, unless you count Qui-Gon's lightsaber. But nevertheless, Qui-Gon runs through a shrub right here as he's trying to get away from the droid invasion. It was one of those things where he may or may not have hit the grass a little bit earlier, but to me, it looks like he stepped in some puddles and then he stepped on the grass. I don't know. But regardless, let's move on. Up next, at the fourth shortest time it took to touch grass, we have Ryan Johnson's beautiful gift to Star Wars, The Last Jedi. It takes everyone's favorite character, Rey Skywalker, exactly 31 minutes minutes and 51 seconds to walk across the whole freaking island and from the moment we see her she's walking on grass Honestly, I was kind of surprised that we didn't see anyone touch grass in the opening scene of the movie. I mean, when they're evacuating the resistance base, I was sure that there'd be some grass being touched, but they were all walking on stone pathways, so that was that. Oh, and also, just to get this out of the way, because I know the comments will be roasting me, but yeah, I'm sure if I really looked hard, I could see some random scum sucker in the middle of bum frick nowhere standing on a hill or something with grass around him in any of these movies. The idea is not to find the most tiny detail ever and point that out, but I, I digress. What I'm trying to say is that it took Rey just over 30 minutes to touch some grass in the last Jedi. And now we're moving on to another movie that is also second in its trilogy, and that is Attack of the Clones. Now, when I was making this video, I knew instantly where I could find some grass, and lots of it. That's because all day every day, all I see are different versions of this meme right here on Twitter, and guess where Anakin and Padme happen to be sitting? That's right, smack dab in the middle of this big old field of grass. And this scene right here happens exactly 47 minutes and 52 seconds into the movie, which honestly is right about where I expected. Coming up next, we have The Force Awakens, and it takes them just about 56 minutes and 49 seconds to touch grass in this movie. But actually, that reminds me. Hello there, everybody. My name is Jedward, and I make tons of videos about Star Wars and other franchises like it. And if you're enjoying this video so far, then be sure to smash that subscribe button. It would really help me out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But back to The Force Awakens, this is one of those times where the characters are walking on a path, and one of them might have nudged a blade of grass possibly, but I can't really be certain. But then there goes BB-8, clearly rolling off the path and right onto the grass, and that's where we officially count it. But what's funny is that it only takes Return of the Jedi 9 seconds longer to touch grass at 56 minutes and 58 seconds. I mean, in terms of movies that are both hours long, it's kind of crazy how close they are to each other. As you might expect, Jabba the Hutt is the character in this movie who does touch grass on Tatooine. No, I'm kidding. It's obviously the forest moon of Endor. You know, making this video is the first time that I've ever really noticed it, but these Star Wars transitions are pretty funny. I mean, it kind of makes sense in Star Wars, but imagine you're in theaters watching, I don't know, Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, and then all of a sudden you get hit with one of these vertical screen wipes. I gotta admit, I would probably bust out laughing in theaters. Anyway, I got 
gone off topic again, but the scene opens with the whole gang waist deep in some thick underbrush, so that definitely counts. Moving on, at the number, what is this, the number 6 spot, number 7? Ah, well, I lost count, but the point is that we're now on Revenge of the Sith, and to be honest, I wasn't even sure if this movie had grass in it at all, but I completely forgot about Order 66. That's right, at exactly 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 48 seconds, Jedi Master Ayla Sekiro was walking around Felucia, and we close in on Commander Bly, who's also just walking around Felucia. If I remember correctly, he stops and asks her politely if she wants to stop here for lunch. Oh wait, no, he and the rest of the clones gun her down in a heartbeat. Yikes. Listen, I know that whatever this is that they're walking around on isn't exactly grass, but I don't know, it's green, and it looks like some kind of mushroom fern, so I'm gonna count it. If you really think that it doesn't count and you want to die on this hill, then fine, you can skip to 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 49 seconds, where Yoda gets in his goofy, ah, uh, egg-looking spaceship to go to Dagobah. He and the Wookiees are definitely walking around on grass then, but personally, I'm gonna have to give it to Commander Bly. I mean, look, when they zoom out, you can literally see that it looks exactly like grass from a distance. Let's keep going, though, and next up, we have Solo, a Star Wars story, at a whopping 2 hours, 3 minutes, and 36 seconds. Han and Chewbacca are walking up to Lando's weird jungle game of Sabacc, and you can see right here that as they're walking in, they barely brush against this fern right here, and you know what? I'm gonna count it. Not much more I can say. I saw it move, so that's that. But what if I were to tell you that we're actually really close to the end of this video, because we've just reached the longest it's taken any character in any Star Wars movie to touch grass. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Jedward, you relentless rogue, you, how can that be? You haven't talked about A New Hope, or the Clone Wars movie, or Empire Strikes Back. Ah, excellent observation, my dear viewer. It's actually very simple, and the explanation is this. In all three of those movies, not a single blade of grass was touched whatsoever, not in a single one of them. The closest thing that these three movies had to touching grass was when Luke Skywalker was on Dagobah in Empire Strikes Back. But even then, the ground is just sticks, leaves, and dirt. And yeah, he does swing on a vine, but there ain't no way I'm counting a vine as grass. That's too big of a stretch, even for Star Wars. You know what's not a stretch, though, is that if you like this video, then you will absolutely love this video right here with all your heart. I promise so be sure to go check it out. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.